Hi, welcome to part two of our uh, conversation about blood and blood work here, preventative care. Will Albanese, Managing Director at Aspira Health, here with um, Chris David, uh, awesome at the pogo stick. I don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> But Mark good at yo-yos, yeah. Okay. Good at yo-yos. Got a lot of free time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was good at these things, but we're still drinking our yellow edition Red Bulls. Okay. So we were just talking about um, blood work, and um, we had gone over your CMP a little bit, talked about your numbers and um, what you get with a CMP, what it costs you, and things like that. You were really good in all facets, um, but you didn't know what the numbers meant, and you were like, "Hey, Will, you know, let's look at these and try to figure stuff out." And this is what you're going to go over with your primary care doctor. So. You come in, you get the blood work done. Um, we talked about CMP. CBC is more of a marker, looks at a lot of the things that are going on with your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and things like that. Um, kind of like blood counts. And those are important because they, they're a quick and easy way, once again, with blood work to point out if any problems are occurring. One thing that happens pretty routinely is we'll identify leukemias and lymphomas and things like that, or at least markers that could lead to those things, cancer, mm -hmm. cancer in your CBC. Um, your bone marrow is what creates your red blood cells, your white blood cells, things like that. So when you get a cancer, it just means you have too much growth in a certain area. Mm -hmm. So your bone marrow may start producing too many red blood cells or too many white blood cells, hence the leukemia or, or um, you know, any kind of disease that's related to that. Hmm. And looking at those numbers in the CBC can easily point out, you know, hey, I need to refer you to an oncologist. And there's a reason why hematology and oncology are in the same profession because they, you know, frequently have those oncological um, diagnoses together that can be, you know, worked on together. Those people in those specialties know how to treat and look at those numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of neat. The other, thing that, um, the other thing that's really cool about a CBC is it can also tell you if you have an active infection going on. One of the things in the hospital we used to always look at right away is, do you have an elevated white blood cell count, WBC? Mm -hmm. White blood cells kill infections. There's tons of different white blood cells, but they're a marker for if you have an infection that's ongoing, your body's going to go, hey, I got to get rid of that. So they ramp up the white blood cell production. And if you have an elevated white blood cell count, it's like, hey, Chris here might have an infection going on. And you know, I see the red, giant red spot on his skin where you have that cut. Maybe it correlates, and you can mm. diagnose it that way. Um, it could also be something brewing in the background that you don't know about. Like, you know, I have felt under the weather for a long time. Maybe it's endocarditis or, you know, it could be a lot of different things that are causing you to have an elevated white blood cell, and then they can look at those further. So it's a good way to look at quick snapshot. I gotcha. And then um, you also are typically going to get a lipid panel done. Now, as a pharmacist, I love talking about lipids. Cholesterol. <laughs> Boy, I could talk all day about lipids. <laughs> talk all day about lipids because, as you may or may not know, statins are cholesterol medications and they're one of the most widely prescribed medications um, out there. They're mm -hmm. used for prevention and treatment all the time in medicine. Um, so, basically, far, as a pharmacist, we look at statins all the time. We look at um, lipid panels all the time and we say, you know, what is your cholesterol? You know, what is your good cholesterol? What is your bad cholesterol? HDL being the good cholesterol, LDL being the bad cholesterol. Why is there a good cholesterol and a bad cholesterol? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, no, I mean, um, so the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol is really which direction it's going to. It's going to and from the liver. HDL is great because it takes a lot of the cholesterol back to the liver where it can get processed, packaged, and shipped out of the body. LDL can float around. It's very, I want to say like big and fluffy is kind of, it's a low density, um, low density cholesterol. Is that the kind that sticks to the side of your arteries and causes plaque? Exactly. Athlosclerotic plaque. I knew that. I knew that was on the tip of my tongue. Slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It takes me, I, I fumble that word every time, but yeah. So eventually over time, cholesterol doesn't kill you right away. What it does is over time, your artery gets cholesterol build up in there, build up, build up, build up. The plaque builds up on top of the cholesterol. And then you have either occlusion, which is the closure of that vein, so no blood's getting through to places like the heart and brain and things like that. Or you have a rupturing in the plaque where it sends a clot somewhere else and that lodges and causes um, you know, 
an event where he caused ischemia or an infarct. It's or an infarct. An what? An infarct? In infarct. What infarct. about an aneurysm? Dad said fart. <laughs> yeah, right. An an so an aneurysm is an explosion where the vein actually blows open. So yeah. A little different. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know if plaque causes aneurysms, but I know it definitely causes the occlusion or closing of the blood vessels. Bottom line, you got good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. You want that good. Yep, you want the good stuff. Because it and lowers the bad, right? Can I tell them about you're not, like, this is phenomenal. Oh, yeah, please. We have a freak of nature here. <laughs> <laughs> not just for his yo-yo skills. <laughs> but no, the, um, your LDL, or sorry, your HDL, good cholesterol, HDL, came back at 164, I think, which is off the charts. Tell that to my wife. Yeah, he's special. Yeah, whatever, <laughs> sure. Tell Mr. Special to do the dishes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I'm never going to yeah. do them. <laughs> never live down that. But uh, yeah, no, was, your HDL was fantastic. And um, one of the ways you can raise your HDL to get good cholesterol in your system is you can work out. Or? Or um, there is lots of studies that support the use of alcohol for act alcohol consumption can raise. You heard it here first. That's how I get mine. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, the old joke is you can literally run from bar to bar and raise your HDL or good cholesterol. <clears throat> That's one way to remember it. We just went to Atlantic City. My good cholesterol is probably even better now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't really drink that much. Uh, I'll typically have like, d not like my, my 20s at all, certainly in the past there was some alcohol consumption, but yeah, I, I don't really drink that much and I probably get, I go to the gym maybe once or twice a week, but I think the point is that you can raise your good cholesterol and just the minimal amount of effort here with getting some exercise just a couple times a week is go out for a walk, uh, go Diet's for a bike too. ride. Yeah. I eat a lot of eggs, so do you think that helps? So there's cholesterol in eggs, and it's a mixed bag there. Um, I think that your best bet is always going to be with the omega-3 fatty acids, the Mediterranean diet over and over again. I fish, do take fish, fish oils. consumption. Yeah. yeah. So maybe not. I'm not a huge fan of supplements. They're not bad. But the question is, are they really good? What has been proven over and over again, fish in your diet. So mm -hmm. rather than go out and buy supplements, Incorporate that salmon, that cod, you know, whatever you eat a couple of times a week. Maybe, you know, instead of a burger night, you have a fish fry night or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's ultimately going to help your cholesterol out a lot. It's going to help your lifestyle and it's also going to help your waistline too because it's a lean fat. Right. So there's a couple of benefits there. I don't really eat a lot of uh, red meat either. And I don't know it's if that's start. correlated. People say that uh, heart disease is correlated with red meat or is it just because people who eat a lot of red meat are doing other things that might not be so good for your body? No, it's definitely cool. It's definitely the consumption of the actual product. The red Joe meat Rogan itself, would yeah. disagree. Oh, my God. Well, I can't help. Joe Rogan. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have a side of ivermectin with my burger here for my health. And, uh, stay tuned for ivermectin in the next episode. Yeah, uh, it's coming. Probably not. It's got, yeah, but. Well, and so, um, you know, you're, there's many things you can do. Um, while you're doing these things, one thing you also want to do is track it over time. Mm -hmm. So getting routine blood work is helpful so you can see not only where you've been but where you're going. You run a 10-year risk summary for cardiovascular disease. It's the way we measure whether or not we should put you on medication or whether we should just keep trying diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. It tells you basically your risk of a serious cardiac event over a 10-year period and it's measured as a percentage. So you have a 1%, a 2% or like a 5% where you probably want to start medication. Mm. It's all related to your blood pressure, your cholesterol levels, um, and various risk factors like that. You put it into a calculator and it spits out a number for you. So you see if you're at risk for heart disease, which is, I mean, from what I understand, the number one killer, right? Yeah, it's a huge killer. Um, In America, <clears throat> at least. Cancer, heart disease, and now COVID's number three, actually, over the yeah. last year. But it's coming up the ranks. Yeah, but anyway, um, you do get the blood work done. You can log it in your apps that you have. There's plenty of health apps. I know you're big into the health, health app realm. And Aspira is getting a health app. We're going to get a health app. It's coming live next week, pretty next much. Next week? Yeah, pretty, pretty much next week should be available. So you'll be able to download your scores, and you'll be able to look at them in your app, and you can track them over time. And that's important because you know where you've gone and, hey, I'm improving. So maybe the argument with the doctor is maybe I don't start the med. If I keep going in the same direction, I'll be good. Or, hey, you're getting a lot worse. 
let's nip this in the bud now. Mm. Yeah, well, the one app I was looking at was five to six hundred dollars. Now, how much does the Aspira app cost? Mm. You're gonna be shocked, but there's no cost. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, Mr. David. It is. You're just giving it away. Gratis. Wow, and it's gonna give you an overall health score, right? Uh, yes, there are different. Yeah, you're gonna be able to look in green, yellow, red kind of realms on a bar and see where you're looking at, where you're going. Mm -hmm. How you're doing overall, and it gives you a good indicator of your health, and you can go home and feel good about yourself. I like feeling good about myself. So, I'm powered cover. by my own self esteem. <laughs> <laughs> I feel great. <laughs> we all know you feel great, Will. <laughs> well, so get your blood work one done. It's it's practically free, especially if you have insurance. Get it done once a year, preventative. Find out. Uh, how your overall health is doing, if there's anything that you need to be concerned about, or if you could just sleep nice at night knowing that you're super duper healthy. <laughs> yeah, peace of mind. Can't yeah. put a price on that. Cheers. All right. Well, thank you so much for reviewing my, my blood work and kind of explaining what these different metrics mean and telling me that my good cholesterol is out of this world. We should, yeah, you're, you're a freak of nature, like oh, I said. Oh, stop. I yeah. bet you tell that to all the patients. <laughs> tell that to all the people we interview between two patients. <laughs> Next time, we'll have to talk more about the other, the other stuff. How's that sound? Sounds great. All right. See you guys later. Have a great day. Take care.